Yeah, you're right. Don't worry. 12 weeks. <laughs> 12 weeks. So it will be, um, tell me, tell me more about my second COVID appointment. Yeah. So what just, what just happened then, Tony, at my end? Well, either you orchestrated that perfectly <laughs> or it was sheer luck that you're, you're, you've now booked your second COVID jab. Exactly. I mean, it shows how, how much time we spend talking to each other on Zoom that, yeah. that if I'm only going to get two phone calls like that, uh, for a COVID jab, the first and the second. But one of them, we're talking, I'm talking to the only man who I have spoken to for three hours um, about vaccine hesitancy. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and the only man I know who we, uh, who I've recorded one another of my films and sent it in um, and got it published in the Hastings Independent. So you are famous as someone asking people to be a little bit more considerate when they become vaccine proselytizers. Um, sorry if I use big words. A yeah, not one I've heard before either. Okay, a proselytizer is someone like a missionary in Africa who goes around convinced that what they're saying is the truth oh, and right. rams it down other people's throats. Yes. So there are vaccine proselytizers out there, aren't there, Tony? Well, yes, there's lots of them. There's far too many of them, I might add. <laughs> they're, 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 they're more of a pest than Jehovah's Witnesses. They are, yes. I, I, it has been duly noted that none have turned up at my door since the pandemic started. Um, <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses or vaccine proselytizers? Well, actually both. Um, but, um, but you have had Stop 5G proselytizers come to your door. Yeah, not, not, to, not, not didn't actually... Not no, no, but I'm, I'm widening the scope of our conversation so that it includes yeah. who has come to your front door to influence you politically. And has anyone responded to your piece to the quote, or, which was a really decent sized quote that they put in the Hastings Independent about your um, antipathy towards um, vaccine proselytizers? But surprisingly, or well, surprisingly in one respect, no. In, unsurprisingly in one respect no because I mean a lot of my friends that uh, know me regularly and they know I get uh, quite passionate and quite um, uh, you know worked up about stuff and I very often do post things on Facebook that I think after a while my friends just think oh he's off on one again and they just ignore it um, so therefore the only the only kind of reactions I usually get are from either people either from people I don't know um, or um, you know, somebody who's particularly interested in engaging with me, but uh, so, so I, I, get ignored. I think that you're less on an ego trip in your life than I am, Tony. Yeah, is that a fair comment? Um, well, yeah, I, I would say so, but um, what's your evidence? I'm, I'm going to argue against you now. You've taken that position. <laughs> I'm going to say you're on more of an ego trip. I've never no, published. But... I've never published any of my albums, my CDs, information about my. CDs on Facebook, whereas you're banging on about why people should get, I'm, I'm and, and, and you're putting you're putting silly pictures of you dressed as Sherlock Holmes on the cover and things like that. If that's not an ego trip, well, that, that, what that, is? Actually, I realised the other day the chances of that actually getting off the ground that cover would be remote because I suddenly realised that um, money. No, well, not only that, but there might be a copyright issue with that. I hadn't thought of that. Um, well, no. No, Tony, I, I want to, I, I'll, I'll cover you insurance wise for any copyright issue on uh, wearing a, de a deer store. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what the rules are on things like that, because I mean, elementary is just a word. But whether yeah. wh whether anybody would say, well, because you've called it elementary, it's, uh, it, you know, you're trying to sell it on the back of uh, Sherlock Holmes reputation or not, I don't know. But I mean, yeah. the fact that I'm not actually selling it anyway, I, I've never actually released it, it kind of makes it all rather null and void, really. I know, but all you need to do, have you seen the hat change? Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. Uh, all, all you need to do is put in Google, is the word elementary, um, is the word elementary trademarked or copyright? Mm. Uh, but then again, I can't see how you can trademark or copyright a word, really, because if it's in the if it's in the if it's in the the, the English dictionary, then technically speaking, everybody got exactly. Used to, it, haven't they? To trademark or copyright a word, you have to create it. 
Yeah, well, they wouldn't be able to do that with elementary because elementary has no. been around for years, isn't it? It's been exactly. So you're you're in safe story. territory, and I encourage you to email me the link that you want me to put underneath this film when I put this film on YouTube. Well, I'm not selling. I'm 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 not. I mean, I haven't released any of my LPs, and I know, uh, but but there is a YouTube film of one of the tracks off Elementary available, isn't there? No, there isn't. Not now. Not a single. No. Tony, no, you want me to visit? Nothing. There's nothing on YouTube of mine at all now. I took everything down. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know that you didn't phone a friend before doing the uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Well, with 259 films and a possible forty thousand dollar fine per video, it if was, you made a bad decision, Tony, I wasn't going to take any chances. I would have covered you with my with with the woodland that my company yeah. owns. Yeah, that costs yeah. less than. That cost around forty thousand. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Worth a yeah, but that's per video. I had two hundred and fifty-nine videos on YouTube. Well, you could have left one, and I would have covered it. Yeah. <laughs> the one you should have left. Which which one should you have left, Tony? Not Pepe Le Pia. What? Which one should you have left? What man of shirts? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, well, nobody could have. Well, I, I say nobody, but in this, in the, in the modern world, I don't think that applies. That nobody could possibly take umbrage at man of shirts because these days people seem to take umbrage at everything and anything in any in any order and for any reason. Tony, I'm going to take umbrage at that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My point proven. Exactly. No, tell me the most trivial thing apart from my sticking my finger up now, which shows people taking umbrage at the slightest thing. Um, well, one, one, one of the things that I saw in, I mean, again, it's it, it's all a matter of opinion, maybe, but I mean, I really don't understand. And you said you like it, that one of the things our conversations do is that we challenge each other. Yeah. Are you enjoying this challenge so far? Well, yeah, I'm, but I'm, I'm calling sure. you out. I'm calling you out on an exaggeration. Yeah. Well, all right. But it's not going to go down well with the, with the viewers because it's something that, again, I'm scared to even mention the word in today's day and age. But according to the according to I saw in the paper the other day, uh, classical music is racist, which I just I well, I haven't got which, any hair. So I couldn't hair any out. But if I had had hair, I would be back where I am now. Okay, How the I, hell music is supposed to be racist. I, I Well, yeah, yeah. CSEs, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, I just don't get any of that, 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 that this, this woke stuff. Or it, to me, it's just it's creating more of a problem. Okay, I, I'm solving anything. I, I'm, I'm going to share. A, I've got to now find. Now you've used the word woke. I've got to share a, a Venn diagram with you, Tony. Did you do Venn diagrams at school, or were you bunking off on that day? Um, I don't even think we did them because I don't I don't know I don't remember even the, the name. So Okay. But um, then again, I did go to the Grove School in Hastings, which if anybody's watching that, that you don't need to say where it was. That's that's <laughs> that's basically enough. People already know what level you're at. <laughs> or rather you're not. <laughs> so um so what I'm going to do, Tony, is I'm getting the screen ready. I'm, I suppose I might as well do share screen at this stage. But I want you to describe uh, the Action for Happiness tent, because this will demonstrate a Venn diagram. Do you remember on Hastings oh, yeah. Independent Day? Can you? Yeah, I, I remember that. And I, I, I loved the irony that, that, that it was me, of all people, that you chose to, to advertise on Action for Hastings Happiness. I thought to myself, well, you'll be lucky if one of my mates doesn't sue you under the Trade Descriptions Act. <laughs> so what do you see in front of you now, Tony? Describe what you see. Well, it's just it looks like it's your it's a Twitter dot com Paul Crossland with replies page. It's got various things in the middle, which uh, uh, look like they're probably photographs you posted, but there's nothing to do with a diagram that I can see. Not yet. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll down through some of my tweets and we might even do, wow, we might even do a um, beginner's guide to Paul's Twitter stream or something like that in passing. Um, so I've included today's Daily Mail. Why do you think I've included today's Daily Mail? This is more important than the Venn diagram I was going to show you. This is well, um, I haven't seen the paper so far today because... Um, 
Um, you have now. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, I want to zoom in in on this. I'm trying to work out how to zoom. In in some way, in in some strange and bizarre way, I do actually feel that um, this particular subject you're bringing up. I does think if the one to, some of the other conversations we've had about it does politics and uh, and stuff so okay let's uh, i'm going to save this image to my pictures file um and uh what i'll save it i think it's a clap i think this is as classic a headline although in a different genre to freddie star at my hamster yeah I think Boris painted into a corner is just brilliant as a as a as a title. The only thing that comes close that there's been in the last thirty years. The only thing that comes that comes close to Boris painted into a corner is um, my what's her name? What's the name of the woman who cries at Hollywood's awards? Who was in Shakespeare in Love, amongst other things? No idea because I don't watch, um, don't um, watch Oscars. Shakespeare. You've never watched the Oscars? No. The award Not ceremony. Now. You know, interesting. Um, film. My interest in films died out with Marilyn Monroe and the Carry Ons. Really, I'm afraid. Hang on, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe died before you were born, more or less. Yeah, 1962. God bless her, cotton socks. And you were born in 1965. It's even that. Even with that, I was unlucky. I missed her by three years. Well. I, I was just lucky enough. Carly Simon wrote a song about me when I was just two years old. You're <laughs> so you're vain. Bad. You probably think this song is about you. Um, so, um, oh, I can't. Glyn Paltrow. What's Paltrow's first name? Glyneth. It is Glyneth or Gwyneth. I think it's Gwyneth. 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 That's it, Gwyneth. Apologies to her because I can't pronounce. Apologies to the whole Welsh nation. Yeah, I mean, to be quite honest, you're doing an excellent job here of showing what a completely useless individual I am with various. Well, I, I, I'm basic, basically so far. You're 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 out of my even even if football and other and soul music are on the agenda. I won't pick you for a pub quiz anytime soon. No, no, unless it's about spooky Ruben's B-sides, in which case I might have a chance. But If I found that I, I was in a pub quiz and found it was all about spooky Ruben's B-sides, <laughs> I would <laughs> complain bitterly to the management and never buy a pint there again. Okay? You haven't, you haven't lived until you've heard spooky Ru Ruben's live version of Golden Brown by I the Stranglers. I would love to hear that, so please... We'll put a link to that below here. And in case the audience finds are uh, who may be, this may be their first encounter with a hashtag um, St. Leonard's local treasure, Tony May um, YouTube film um, uh, in dialogue, not diatribe. We, um, that's another hashtag I created today. Good one, isn't it? Dialogue, not diatribe. Is that a good hashtag? Uh, possibly. I'm not totally sure what diatribe means either, which is why I laughed. I've heard um, the word before. That is it. I have at least heard that word before. Okay, but you use, have you uh, written down in your grammar book? Have you written down in your grammar book? Proselytizing. <laughs> Remember in America, it's spelled with a Z, in England with an S. Mm. Okay, and Venn diagram, that could go in your book as well. But um, I want people for whom this is their first film to know that Tony May and Paul Crossland films are often like this. But yeah. but we do alight upon a theme and we do carry the theme on for a good half hour once we've alighted upon it. And yeah. the theme we're, we're alighting on is Tory coup to oust Boris. Yeah. I believe, oh. I believe Boris will have offered his resignation, either absolute or conditional resignation by 6th of May. And I'm willing to give 10 to one Bet, uh, bets on that. If you want to bet ten quid against a hundred quid, Tony. No, I, I'm. I'm. I, me and betting just seem to be, you know, um, horrendous bedfellows. I'm afraid. Oh come on, it's only a tenner. Okay. No. I, I, How well, about a spooky, it, a spooky it, Rubens B side? I want, <laughs> I want a spooky Rubens B side off you, and you get a hundred quid if you offer yeah. me a spooky Rubens B side. Um, and you say it, that Boris it, Johnson it will not have to offer his resignation even 
conditionally by the 6th of May, and I say he will, will you surrender your spooky Bukens B-side whilst <laughs> I have put 100 on the table? <laughs> is 100 called a pony? No, that's that's 50 quid. I think, no, is what's, it 50 or is it a pony? I what's a remember. monkey, what's a pony, and what's 500? 500, I think. I'm not putting a not pony. Not that I know, because I never won anywhere near that amount, but uh, I what's think- the biggest, think... What's the biggest win you've had? Uh, well, no, I, I tell a lie, actually. I, I, the, the, I think the biggest amount I ever won was about uh, 600 quid. It cost me 18 quid to put it on, so that weren't bad. But that so, was 1987, so I've been trying ever since and not got anywhere, <laughs> not got anywhere near that. So I've probably lost it, God knows how many times back, but at least I've had a bit of fun doing it. So well, the, some of the time. Um, the only place I gamble, guess where? Well, hopefully not on, on fruit machines, because that are even worse. No, I used to do fruit machines. Oh, but I, I also held the key, yeah, the lottery. How much yeah. do you think I've set my limit for gambling on the lottery? Because they do instant wins. Yeah. Oh, oh well, on, on here? On, 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 on computer. I own, because at least I know if I lose, it's generally going towards sports and yeah. culture projects, which is a, which is actually a serious it's consolation a, when I lose. It's a very poor value bet, to be quite honest. Sure, I, I know it's a poor value bet, but it's a form of, value. it's a form of charity towards sport and culture. Yeah. And community. And well, community I, I don't need to give anything more to charity because I've, I've lost enough in the past. <laughs> no, but, but the beneficiaries were Paddy Power, Bet Fred, um, and Ladbrokes, weren't they? Um, not always, no, not always. But my, um, okay, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of any other bookies. Can you reel well, off, I mean, reel off you... the names of ten bookies to win the to win the to win the, the oh. quiz? Ten, <laughs> ten bookies I haven't mentioned. I mentioned Paddy Power, Ladbrokes, and Bet Fred. So come on, carry on. You, you got Bet365.com. No, 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 no. no. Bookies, not online. Bookies. Can you well, name? There's Corals. Yes. William Hill. Yes. Um, Victor Chandler. Oh, there's a shop. I, I'll have to believe yeah, you. There's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a shop with Victor Chandler. Um, uh, what's the other one? Um, the, I'm not sure if they're still going, but there was Mecca. That was another bet. Book, sure, that, that'll do. Yeah, I'll accept it, even if it's um, passed. What was the other ones? Um, so, so many of them have gone online now. All right, you've only managed to do four out of ten. We'll leave it there so as not to bore the public. But yeah, um, well, I think you've already done a good. I think we're doing an excellent job of boring the public already. To be <laughs> to be perfectly frank. Pl pl well, what I can do. You're not with these Homer already. I'll be surprised. Tony, you know that what I can do with these films is put beneath an index, so that yeah. I can say um, one minute to ten minutes general chatter, gambling, a major theme plus proselytizing. Well, what um, we could do, we could always market the first part of this film as for people that can't sleep. That would be perfect. Uh, we'd be knocking them out by the millions, wouldn't we? <laughs> um, so um, I don't think I'm likely to get millions of viewers to anything that I, that I do. I need to rein myself in every time I have a grandiose plan these days because too much of my life has been depression due to not living up to the scale of my grandiose plans. So um, do you recognize that depression is a, a consequence of an unfulfilled life? Of an unfilled, unfulfilled aspiration? Yeah, definitely, because I mean, um, wh whether it's genuine though, that it's kind of, like, wh whether, whether it really is unfulfilled, I, I, think it, I think it's more correct to say that it's the result of the perception of an unfulfilled life yeah um, yeah life could be you know, fulfilling but if yeah. you say my life will only be for example i set myself up I, in september i posted on additionalinfo.blogspot.com my plan to get elected as an mp within three general elections getting one percent of the vote followed by um no no half a percent of the vote um and i doubled that actually in 2019 but then I set myself up that I could increase that tenfold by the next election, yeah, to 5% of the vote, which means saving the deposit. And then the following election to get 10 times that, which means getting elected with 50% of the vote. Mm. So I was setting myself up for, for failure. 
because I, I doubt you and I, if we look at it in the cold heart of day, truly believe that an independent candidate with my characteristics and level of social media skills and low level of resources could outperform the power of one of the two major political parties. Well, that that is the problem. It's just, and also there's, the, the, you know, two major political parties are long established. They've got, they've got deep roots. They've got, you know, dedicated followers. I mean, you used to be a dedicated follower of a party. I won't name it, but you can. No, I, I wouldn't say. I don't think. I, I mean, it, if, would you if have ever joined it, a political party in the midst of Brexit issues? Would you have ever joined a political party to get us? I, out I, of the I would never. I, I don't think I would ever join a political party of, of any. I, I, I think. Well, for one, I, one, I'm an awkward git anyway. I admit that. I, 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 I second that motion. <laughs> I'm always at odds with everybody about virtually everything. So for that reason uh, uh, alone, you know, I, I just don't need the hassle of consistently trying to, you know, try and argue or, or well, not argue, but discuss my way through my opinion with, with other people. There's no way that a, a, a political party could be um, built around. The only way it would work would be as if it was my political party and I made up all of the uh, and, and people just joined if they agreed with it, <laughs> but but that's not being democratic, and they'll be put complete. It'd be like the autonomous dictatorship party. Well, what's the point of that? Exactly, it's not a party, is it? It's a one person. It's a one person thing. So yeah. I'm I'm just not a party. I'm not a team player. I never have been, to be honest. Tony, you've been on my team as my wingman, and but that was because I was proposing a type of politics where people listen to one another and we try and bring things together rather than fight um, our corner to the bitter end, yeah? Well, not only that, but one thing I've always been is I've always been a friends person, and I've always been someone that tries to support my friends. I mean, because I suffer badly with anxiety and, de and depression, and because I've felt in lots of times in my life, I've felt that I haven't lived up to what I was capable of doing. And sometimes I've looked at my life and I've thought, well, if I'd have had a bit of support here and there from a few people to keep propping me up when I kept falling over, maybe I would have made it. And I think for that reason, that's why I try and help my friends. If they try and do something, I try and be that prop. Are you still trying to make it or not, Tony? Sorry? Are you still trying to make it or not? No, well, no, not really. Um, so what, what support do you want from friends? This is even more important than Boris painted into a corner. What, what, what support do you, do you want? Um, I, 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 think, I think, hello, what, what's going on there? I oh. decided to, 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 to have you bigger on the screen if yeah. we're going to talk about friendship. The, the, the daily mail doesn't matter so much anymore. Well, I mean, at the moment, I just need, I really just need the support of people being there. And, um, um, you know, I, I just, just like we were talking about before, just being understanding of the fact that I, I don't agree with a lot of the things that everybody else agrees with. Um, and that that might be irritating at times, but equally it's, you know, I can't change how I think. You know, if I have an opinion about something, I'm not saying it's right, but it's it's still my right to hold that opinion. And I just need people to be a bit supportive, a bit tolerant, and uh, just to be there, really. I'm not really sure where I'm going in life at all, but at least if I've got a few did, people did in my corner. Well. Sorry? Did you say just to be there? Well, yeah, because... Um, you know, constants in life are really important. I mean, this, in a way, this comes back to um, yeah, end harm, seek repair, purify the heart. But it, it comes back to um, what healing would help most. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, um, there's lots of things I've done wrong and or things that I've kind of messed up, but then who hasn't and the trouble is if you undo the things that you have done um then you gain in one respect you lose in another noble friendship so is our friendship noble yeah i would say so yeah how do you describe noble in this context because the buddha um who came up with that phrase grew up in a society where some people were 
called noble just by their birth. It's called the caste system, and we have a little bit of it in having a royal family. But people are not noble just by their birth. People are noble due to their actions. And some friendships are more noble than others. So yeah, I, can, I, in yeah, what way, Tony, I'm going to say one more sentence and ask a very specific question. In what way do you see our friendship as noble? Well, I see our friendship as noble in the respect that we're always honest with each other. Um, yeah, so know, honesty. So I'm going, to, I'm, going to circle, I'm going to circle on some needs um, we all share, the needs that are met by um, noble friendship. And you're saying honesty. Um, okay. Key. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think honesty is, is the key to everything because you can't always agree on everything. And um, you, might, you might have to have awkward conversations at time to time. But yep. at least if people know you're honest and that your your feedback to them is coming from a from from a from a kind place, um, then then you know it's easier to kind of uh, accept. I like walking away from the camera and seeing what you do when I do that. <laughs> so yeah. I'm I'm asking you to guess at some more needs, and I'm going to uh, my pen ran out. I needed to get another pen. So I'm going to, I've got the other pen, I'm going to circle the needs that are, that we all have and that are met by noble friendship. Noble friendships needs according to Tony. Okay. So yeah, well, I mean, honesty, listening, um, support. Hang on, um, hang on, hang on, hang on, let me think, think, think a bit slower so I can keep up with you. I've got to find them on this sheet. Um, where's? It would be on there though, would it? Listening. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on, on empathy. It's like um, I'm, I'm going to circle acknowledgement. Yeah, um, that, that as well. That's part of that. You know, that's close to to listen, listening. Recognition is is there as well. Yeah. Um, Respect in listening. Should we just say respect? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, respect, understanding, um, or at least at least trying to understand. If, if, even if you don't understand, at least if somebody tries to understand. Um, sure. it, it, I mean, no, being noble is is about a lot of things. It's you know about being tolerant and um, uh, you know trying not to be reactionary. In, in other words, thinking of thinking of the other person and not necessarily tapping immediately into your own, you know, emotional reflexes, if you if you want to put it that way. Um, so a oh, consideration is what I'm choosing there. Yeah, consideration. OK, so have you got a paper and pen, Tony? I've got a pen, funny enough. I, but I, do I, you have paper or will you write on one of your album covers? Well, I, no, I, I'm not. I haven't quite got to that stage yet. When I've given up on them quite that that much. I mean, um, bird scare as they might end up as. <laughs> okay. But um, I'm not sure about writing on them yet. That's that's a bit too humiliating. <laughs> okay, so, um, can you write down? I think we're going to do ten words. Protection. Subsistence, um, autonomy. I'm trying to choose the right order, really. Here, um, in you know, in what in what order do people want things? People need food and water and light and air and space and warmth and movement and rest and health and hygiene. Those are the subsistence needs. But even sometimes before that, if you're in the wilds. You might need protection, safety, security, peace. So that's why I've put protection number one, subsistence number two, autonomy number three, which is about freedom, choice, control, power, authenticity and integrity. Integrity is the word of the day, R.E. Boris Johnson, isn't it? Um, but we're not going to have a Boris Johnson conversation. Tony, can I officially declare that we've hit upon a theme, noble friendship, that is so significant and a way of talking about it, I would like us to start to make this for
film to be mostly about noble friendship with only a little bit of um, looking at the Boris situation at the end, yeah? You've frozen. Does that mean you're no longer my friend, Tony? Why have you frozen? Why have you frozen? So I tweeted today, wondering, asking what this should be called as a dish. The recipe for this is Tesco soup mix. Um, and then through a juicer, puff pastry, obviously, from Just Roll. Um, with the soup mix. Hi, Tony, we're turning to a cookery program now. Tony. Oh. You're there. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a cookery program I'm, I'm doing now. Do you want to guess the recipe of this that I baked for lunch? I can't even see what it looks like. Is it some kind of bread? This is puff pastry base. Yeah. All right. What do you see in the middle? It looks like um, a sausage roll. No, no. This is just another piece of pastry. Yeah. Right. So what's what's the base? What's on top of the base there? Can you see lentil type things? Yeah, I can see them. Split, but I can't... Split peas and a bit of egg. All oh, right. So um, there's a soup mix. And then with the soup mix, which is pearl barley and uh, red lentils and split peas mostly. Into that, having put through my juicer, carrots and celery, I'm left with all the fibrous stuff from carrots and celery, having drunk the juice and ginger. I make that with lemon. I make that as a drink. I put the remains of that in the, in the uh, soup mix. I added a very cheap tin of cream of tomato soup. Um, what other flavoring did I add? Um, turmeric and a little bit of this miso paste. I'm, I, I'm quite taken with this miso and mushroom liquid seasoning. Oh, my, right. my camera. Do you know miso, Tony? No. M miso hungry. Uh, yeah, no, I never, I mean, how, how many adventures into the culinary world have I given you in cooking for you? Oh, quite a lot, yeah. I mean, most of the stuff that you come up with is stuff I've not had before or um, wouldn't have had at home. I mean... What, what do you have this on, Tony? That's it, yellow. Probably, is that mustard? Yeah. What, would, what do you have that on in your life? Oh, have you frozen again? Tony, Tony, Tony. Right. Is it you freezing? Oh, is, it, is it you freezing or is it me? I, well, it's it's you sometimes, and because um, when I was talking to you earlier, you 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 you'd done a craft work job, 
and just stood there completely we not doing anything. We are the robots. Do you do? Do you do, do? We are the robots. I did you note the way that as soon as we were going to talk about something to populist in the news today, that it that my, my I had a power. Oh, it's a conspiracy. Conspiracy, yeah. <laughs> But then again, this is how they make the news, isn't it? It's by making an issue out of, out of something, you know. A lot, of, a lot of the news in the newspapers is done that way, isn't it, you know? So did the did slow internet come across your screen? No, you it just... But that does sometimes happen, doesn't it? You have the words slow internet. Um, it usually says your internet connection is unstable, to which I usually reply, you should see what my doctor says about me. Yes, very good. I didn't. And what does it reply back to you? I don't think it replies back to you at that stage. No, no it doesn't normally. No, it just gets on it with. Just life. ignores you. Yeah. So, um, has that message come on your screen today? I'm trying to get to the bottom. No, it hasn't. No. Of our problem. Okay. So, um, we. I didn't have it on mine either. So, internet froze and you dropped out without any of either of us being given. No, it hasn't. I've even I've even it added a booster it. signal. I've just added a booster signal, and I'm surprised having added it, a boost, it, it, it booster. It was when you, if there's a problem when you place that thing on the table and it hit the table and made a thump. Then it it froze. So whether right. you've got a dodgy wire somewhere or I've got a few dodgy wires. This door, they're all under my hat. Yeah, join the club there. Yeah, yeah. So um. Would would the country be any safer? You you can answer this however you want. If I'd somehow miraculously got elected MPs because there was such a sleaze scandal that no other no political party candidate was acceptable, and I'd miraculously got elected in the last general election, it wouldn't have been the right thing because I needed to look after my dad and all the rest of it. But <coughs> imagining that bizarre scenario that the sleaze got so much that everyone decided that fifty percent of people decided they were. No, it would only take 25% of people to decide they were going to vote for the independent. I could have won the last election on 26% of the vote if the um, other three parties had got an equal amount of votes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really don't really know with all this Lee stuff and that. I think it's, I think for me, the problem is that you, you can't really believe too much of what you read from any source simply because there's such a lot of kind of backstabbing and um, deliberate moves to try and derail the opposition in politics. I mean, politics is such a kind of, a, you know, um, it, it, it's not a Queen's re-rule sport. Do you know what I mean? Sure. It's a, you know, it, it's, a, it's a kick them in the ghoulies if the referee's not looking type of, type of, um, environment and mm -hmm. I think the problem with that is that when something comes up that may genuinely prove to be something that somebody's genuinely done something that you know that they shouldn't have done um, in some respects it's very hard to pick out whether that's true or whether it's just something that's being bigged up yet again just to try and derail somebody um, mm -hmm. I mean I don't I don't know the ins and outs of it and um, I mean, certain stories always do go around and around and around again, like, you know, the, this idea that the Tories are very much into cronyism, as they call it. It's it, it's something that kind of perpetually comes up. Um, and there is an old saying that there's no smoke without fire. But then on the other hand, um, if you're in the opposition and you're not winning elections, then obviously it's in your interest to prof propagate that kind of um, idea. So who knows it's very difficult to to be you know being fair to as as fair as i can it's very hard to say which way if any way that i think on that on that subject mm -hmm. um I, I do what i do think though and i do think is really re relevant to the whole idea of what we've been talking about on these videos is that if we were able to establish a kind of politics in in um in this country it would be far easier for individuals, including any prime minister, to simply be honest with the country uh, without fear of being immediately castigated should they have said something that they probably might have meant for a second, but 
mm. in effect really didn't mean, but they were just really tired, really drained, really depressed, fed up with being told that whatever they do isn't going to work for this reason or that reason. Always on, you know, I mean, basically, you can imagine the scenario working really long hours, not getting in a break from it all. And whatever you say to the scientists, they all come back with the doom and gloom. I mean, in those scenarios, you can imagine anybody snapping and just kind of firing off a tirade of, of, of horrendous language with with, with really kind of vile sentiments, simply because of the sheer frustration and, and, and emotionally draining element of it. But the snag is, if any particular person in politics was to actually be that honest uh, and say that to the, to the electorate or say that to the country that with the way that the current politics works, it would be political suicide and, and they would be seen as weak or, or whatever. And, and that's why we do need desperately to create in this world a kind of politics where, where, where we give people a bit more credit for, for being human. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, how, how far am I allowed to be um, a disreputable person and still be worthy of a vote? Well, I mean, let's face it, nobody, nobody should be disreputable. You should stand or fall by what you believe in. That doesn't mean to say that you have to stand and fall by what other people think you should believe in. But what it does mean is it does mean that, you, you know, you have to be honest in your it, it, honest and consistent in what in what you're doing, whether how, that's how something honest. people agree with or not. How, how honest? Well, I mean... Again, it's very difficult for me to say because I've never been in politics. I've never been in a position uh, in any political party. I've never been. You, you in weren't a real even elected. In, you weren't even elected at university to any. To well, a, I didn't go to university. university so that didn't help. <laughs> what is, what opportunities were there to be elected at school? Um, Was there a school council? I, I'm saying. I don't suppose you in but I think I think I think there was prefects and things like that, but I, I was never likely to. Uh, I, I just wasn't that sort of. I wasn't really when I was at school. As I said, I was really more interested in being a kid. I wasn't really. It was too early for me, you know. Learning most of the stuff I really learned, I've learned after school because because I developed an interest in it and and I've act, actively gone out to seek the knowledge. But at school, the things I was interested in, I was good at. But the things I wasn't interested in, you could have taught me for, you know, week in, week out for years and hardly any of it would have stuck because I'm just not bothered. You know, I, I was never interested in, I loved cooking, but I hated the theory. You know, I just couldn't see the point in knowing the history of cheese. You know? right. I, I, know, I know it's a narrow <laughs> view, but the thing who, is, who to me, it was you, totally irrelevant. Who, who asked you to learn the history of cheese? That was in home economics. And it showed in my grades because when we went, when we did a practical, I had to I had to bake a, a cherry cake, and I got ten out of ten. When I did the theory, I got ungraded. Oh Because wow. to me, well, that was it. But to me, for me, cookery was about cooking. Cookery okay. was about how do I do this? How do I make this? I wasn't interested in the history of cheese or where the cheese came from. All I was interested in was if it says on the thing you want 200 grams of mozzarella, to me, that's all the information I need. I don't need to know the history of mozzarella or where it, where it originated in Italy or to me, that's totally and utterly irrelevant. All I need is the information of what goes in it. How do you mix it in? How do you prepare the baking trays? Blah, blah, blah. How long has it got to be in there? And that, that's what I need. For me, that was the information I wanted. I wanted to be able to do the cooking, learn how to make the things and do them to a good standard. Basically, anything else was irrelevant and I wasn't interested in it. I mean, again, I'm not saying that's a great way of being, but that's just me. I, I you know, I, I'm not... I the. I, I, I make my own mind up as to what I need to know and what's interesting to me and it, it, anything else just I'm just it's not going to stick. Right. Um, Autocratic swine is what that thing uh, I, I, that, that was really funny, actually, because I went on to uh, one of those autograph um, autograph uh, analysis machines on um, 
It was on Eastbourne Pier, I think. And I, I, I took a test and it, it came... It, oh, a, 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 an, an automatic autograph machine, did you say? Yeah, what you did, you signed a piece of paper and you put it through the autograph machine and it came out with a list of your traits and your personality. And I always remember at the bottom, it's the, one of the first things it said is your friends may see you as autocratic. And I didn't know what autocratic meant. All right. So I came home and I asked my mum what autocratic meant. And when she told me, it was I burst out laughing because I <laughs> thought, let me cheat that machine. It and knew it's right. you. It's it, right. And how did it know you? Just for reading your handwriting. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just signed my signature. All I all I did was sign my signature, and it it, it came out and it, it basically. I've still got the sheet somewhere. I, if I find it, I'll I'll have to email you a copy of it. But well, I'm impressed. Yeah, your friends may see you as autocratic, and I thought, well, what's that? And I don't even know what autocratic was. Yeah, I, I've always remembered how funny it was when I I thought, well, it's the blooming cheek to say so, but you're right. Okay. Hopefully, I've got slightly better. As I've got older, but not a lot by the sounds of it. Um, so we were no, noble friendship is what I'm trying to make the main theme. And before the system crashed, I asked you to get a piece of paper ready and write down some categories of needs, broad categories. How much did you get written down? Well, I've only got the first three. I only gave you the first three. Subsistence. So, Again, a lot of these are terms that I wouldn't personally use. So they're a little bit uh, not not necessarily. They're, they're, they're needlessly uh, highfalutin. Well, probably not if you've got a, a, a modicum of intelligence or a decent education. But if you went to the Grove School, yes. <laughs> yeah, you're not sure on you're not sure on intelligence, Tony. It's just education you're short on, short of, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Mind you, I think I've pointed that out quite ably over these videos. You have needed to do an awful so lot. So I, I asked you to describe the happiness tent because I want to teach you what a Venn diagram is. So what was hanging up in the happiness tent on Independence Day um, in the summer of 2011, which is a film you can find on the yeah, Paul Crossland playlist. Paul Crossan playlists. It's called "We Met on YouTube." Hmm. So um, yeah, well, I, I remember it was. I remember it was kind of like um, it, it looked a bit like almost like some kind of uh, Red Indian um, dream you know, catcher. Yeah, something like that. You know, because it had like a, a succession of circles that were inter interconnected. And that uh, is the Venn diagram, Tony. So the Venn diagram I was going to share with you was a Venn diagram of wankers, which has a smaller circle within it, those using the word woke. And that turned up on Twitter. And I said, I do love a Venn diagram, even if it's unkind politics. So anyone who yeah. uses the word woke is a wanker, according to this person on Twitter. Yeah, I wouldn't go as strong as that because like I say, pe pe people kind of believe, I mean, I, I, I simply don't get it. That is, uh, yeah, I, but you realise people who are woke. With it. That's people, the, that's people, people who are woke don't use the word woke. It's only Piers Morgan and his yeah. ilk who are now bashing away at the word, uh, the word um, woke. Um, Rod Little and Piers Morgan. If you hear them talking to each other, or who? No, no, no. Rod Little and um, a guy Andrew Neil on the Spectator uh, YouTube film um i heard talking i think about woke and i've bought and, I, and i've bought piers morgan's book wake up because which is his liberals um his claim to be a liberal he's unfortunately an economic liberal as well as a political liberal sorry this level isn't necessarily for you tony but for the wider audience anyhow i do recommend the first 40 pages of um Piers Morgan's book because it does it was written with an academic support on the history of liberalism and it does clarify the difference between economic liberalism and political liberalism in a way that's very useful. I am not a neoliberal uh, e economist uh, or supporter of neoliberal economics but I am a supporter of free speech. I made that very clear 
in my introductory words in the Hastings Hustings. You can just put hashtag Howling Hustings or hashtag Hastings Hustings in order to get to what I call my finest hour. Tony, I've, I've made a, a film from my audio recording on the stage where Sally Ann Hart, the local MP, oh, well, she wasn't the MP then, but the local Tory candidate, actually turns to me for support and clarity at a couple of points. And you hear that in a way in which the audience wouldn't have heard that. Um, so I, I like re-listening re to it and I've described the film that's an hour long, it's cut out the question where I had nothing to say and a few other bits and pieces, but there's an hour long which is a fair representation of that meeting and includes the flashpoint that went national um, on learning disabilities and the dignity of work or the dignity of pay or the dignity of the basic income. Those are the three positions that were argued and, and, and Nick Perry, the Liberal Democrat candidate, bowed out of, of, of even talking about the point, even though he works in the area of learning disabilities and support in schools which or something. So um, this hour I have described as my finest hour as Paul Crossland independent candidate. How is it for you to hear that I've identified in one of my personas what was my finest hour? Well, um, as I say, I mean, as somebody that was in the, in the crowd that day listening to you, I would um i mean it's very different when you're the candidate and when you're when you're the person listening to it i i'm very proud of the fact that uh, that uh, you've said that and that that was the case because for me that proves that um kind of politics in the in the respect that uh, sally ann hart was still your political opponent and yet she felt um she obviously felt personally on a level that uh, mm. that she was able to kind of not exactly openly appeal to you for some support, but in effect give give off some kind of vibe that 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 she was feeling some kind of support from you, and that that that's good because that's people being people and not not people just being politicians. And I turned to her and said after she'd made the point about how there were nine million immigrants since. Um, between the year 2000 and 2019 seeking work. Um, I said that was brave because maybe either she hadn't read her audience or she just chose to stick her neck out because by using the word um, immigration in the way in which she did and giving a figure and saying too many people coming into the country, she certainly wasn't um, winning the majority over in that room. No, but the, but the important thing is, and this again is yet another example of kind of politics, is that the reason she probably did that, and, and I can't speak for her, obviously, but on a personal level, I would react in the same way. And that is that if you know that everybody in the, in the room is basically not going to listen to whatever you say, and that they're basically going to try and, you know, like... Uh, make you out to the make you out to, to to be something that you're not then basically from that point on there isn't an awful lot of point in being diplomatic or trying to win them over so from that point on you 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 then entrench in your position and you actually go on the offensive and actually be belligerent because you think well they're they're winding me up that i'm going to give as good as i get and and, and, and at the end of the day, that, that may not necessarily be the most politically uh, nourishing thing to do, but on a personal level, like I've said earlier, politicians are only people. Policemen are only people. We're all only a person. And if, if, if people go at us from the wrong angle or they go at us in the wrong way, it's very, very difficult to be a saint and not to react to it, you know? Um, well, I, 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 I believe that Sally Ann Hart is trained enough as a politician to be able, in a lot of occasions, to change her language in a way in which she's aware. I mean, of course, Tories can slip into using phrases they might use amongst themselves in a public setting and suddenly find that they're being heard differently in that public setting. But the first time she used the word compassion, in fact, the only time she used the word compassion in that hour long recording, she got away with it because that word is a very difficult word for 
a Tory to say in front of a hostile Labour uh, crowd. And she said that as a magistrate, um, she had to apply compassion. She, or she, she used the word compassion in relation to the way in which she did her work as a magistrate in the family court. And yeah. um, because her sentence was one that you couldn't disagree with, there was no howling at her using the word compassion. But if she said, the evidence of my, um, the, as a judge, as, as a magistrate, you can see that I was particularly compassionate. That would have been a, don't believe it, yeah? But she put it in a sentence in such a way that she couldn't get a, couldn't get a howl against it. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, I, 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 get, I get the fact that, you know, I mean, let's face it, we, we, we could all potentially look back on our lives and decide that we probably could have handled things a little bit better at one time or another. Um, and I mean, I'm sure that Sally would agree that she's no Sally different Anne. from anyone else in that respect. Sally well, Ann. Yeah, Sally Ann, sorry. I'm, I'm she, not, she doesn't, give her she a doesn't proper, ever. Proper she ha I mean, as a political candidate, she's knocked the E off her birth name. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, the other way around. I, yeah. I mean, to me, that, that, that was, it was just such a hostile atmosphere. Um, and. Um, but it became more hostile and she provoked the crowd before the worst point. She yeah. used the word socialist. And I would say that that word should be on a short list of words not to be used by Tory candidates if they, um, other than to provoke people. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, again, I bring you back to the whole point that, like we've been talking about kinder politics. Now, what you can say, in my opinion, I would say, well, maybe the reason that she used that word was not in any way to provoke anything, but simply because, because of the animosity between the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, they don't actually talk to each other. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was. And therefore, they literally don't know these these red buttons. I know. So, so I mean, so that's they look I, at Labour, and, and, and La Labour is described to the layman as a socialist party. So therefore, they use the word socialist because they don't understand better, and it's because. In politics, political parties have such poor relations with each other that they just don't, they don't listen and they don't talk to each other. So, so the context in which Sally Ann used the word socialist was she said the EU had become a socialist monolith or something like well, that. I, I mean, I can't speak for her, obviously. <coughs> I, I'm, I'm not pretending to speak for her. I'm just trying to interpret as a layman what may or may have been going through her mind. I mean, yeah, I might be which, which is which is all way. which is all I can do. I don't yeah, intend. I don't intend to interview her. I mean, I mean, maybe I should interview her before finishing the um, myth of a heartless Tory. But I'm going to put an analysis of this hour and the mo and the trigger moments that built up to the crescendo that went in that turned viral. Um, locally when when this bit of when this bit of banter the only reason that that Sally Ann Hart standing up for the right to work the dignity of work for learning people with learning um, disabilities um, the only reason that should have gone viral in my opinion is because it was a prime example of not just unkind politics but but um, disrespectful politics yeah what mm. once 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 people have left kind of politics behind i've come up with three categories now Tony, for us to talk about once people have left kind of politics behind and when i talk when i write an obituary either for um for theresa may or for nigel farage i have unkind things to say about both of them yeah unkind politics is part of the game of politics that once in a while you put a dig in, yeah? Beyond that comes disrespectful politics. I hope to never go into disrespectful politics territory. And I would say beyond that comes hate, um, hateful politics. And what happened in Hastings left unkind politics behind the moment um, people shouted out, how dare you? That was Kev Townsend. Uh -huh. 
all that shouting out stuff and and w when they start when they start buying things like shame on you and all that i i i, I just walk away and i i just shake my head i it, it, it's so so uh, childish is my is, is what i would call it so tony what do you think of these four categories i've come up with today yeah the beneath kind politics on the spectrum if we put it left to right kind politics here unkind politics there disrespectful politics there hateful politics there mm. do you see that there's a clear distinction between each of those four yeah i mean obviously by the very nature of even with kind politics you've got to be able to you've got to be able to challenge somebody's uh, uh policies or you've got to be able to challenge somebody's views or make comments about what they've said but it, it's not it's not the fact you have to you, you have to be their best mate and just agree with everything they've said it, but it's the way that you do it. It's it, it it's the way that you do it. And if you are going to make a, a, a strong challenge, then strongly challenge the policy, not the person. Yeah, I, you know what, Tony, the more I th I've thought about it today, and I have thought about it quite a bit today, the more I've wanted to shift from kinder politics to respectful politics, because respectful politics includes deeper accountability. The, the two things that I stand for are kinder politics and deeper accountability collectively i'm calling them respectful politics and i think the other thing is when you talk about respectful politics respectful um res respectful challenges will will warrant thought out and respectful answers whereas yes. baying crowds own, own baying crowds only get disrespectful answers and basically something that is intended to to up the ante even more because you've basically touched on a raw nerve and they think well you know have some of this and, and what so, are you so what's, that, what's the headline i've put back on the screen Tony? boris painted into a corner so i'm referring very specifically now to how keir starmer um came back with three questions questions number two to four his, his first question of course was on coronavirus because that's the number one priority. The questions two to four were attempts to get on um, Boris Johnson to tell the truth in Parliament because you're not allowed, because lying in Parliament is theoretically a resigning matter. Keir Starmer tried to get Boris Johnson to tell the truth on the redecorating of 10 Downing Street. Did you see or hear that interaction at all? I did see um, something on the television um, about uh, Keir asking him a straight question and then pointing out afterwards that uh, he should be aware that under such and such a rule or whatever it was that if it's proved that he's lied that it is a, re a resigning, resigning matter. I did see that. Good. Issue. Okay, so, so that's uh, really, this is a really useful baseline for any political discussion that we're clear what piece of footage or article we've read or seen. Yeah. And we've seen the same bit of coverage from the House of Parliament yesterday. And this, I think, is the tipping point in what I'm calling the Tory coup now, that enough people think that Boris Johnson overstepped the mark um, yesterday and was effectively attacked by Keir Starmer, who pointed out that lying in Parliament uh, is a resigning matter. That was such a strong show from Keir Starmer against Boris Johnson that behind the scenes, those big people with power who we only know in the shadows, although some of them are really well known as well, they have had conversations that said it's time for Boris to go overnight that led to this kind of headline, Boris painted into a corner. So that's the backstory. And I would say that he did not show respectful politics in Parliament yesterday, because respectful politics is that when you are asked by the leader of the opposition for clarity, uh, a, a number of times and your integrity is at stake you owe it to parliament the leader of the opposition and the country to give a straight answer unlike when you're being interviewed by jeremy paxman or his successor emily maitless etc etc on newsnight you don't have to give them straight answers because you're playing politics in that setting they have set you up to answer a biased agenda that unfortunately is uh, more lefty politics than bbc 
even realise that they're engaged in. There are so many assumptions as beneath the questions um, that Newsnight uh, is asking that it's not a level playing field. So of course you lie under those circumstances if you're a careerist politician, unlike myself, I'm not a careerist politician. But in Parliament, asked by the leader of the opposition, um, a very clear question on a matter of integrity, you owe it to the leader of the opposition and the country and even yourself to give an honest answer. And if you don't, you have stepped outside respect for politics and deeper accountability, and you cannot expect kindness. Well, it, it it's kind of a check. It's a bit like a chess game, isn't it? It's, it's kind of a checkmate moment, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're at the point of, uh, it, when you get to that situation, you're at the point where, sadly for you, it looks as if your opponent has managed to manipulate you into a position where basically, um, if you move to the left, you've got two moves left before it's checkmate. And if you give um, the answer that you're, you know, possibly or allegedly, um, uh, you know, uh, rule bound to give, then it's instant checkmate. So Tony, in inaccurate. I want to work with your metaphor and say that what Boris Johnson has is a third option, which is just to move his king backwards and forwards one one position and he's surrounded he thinks by enough pawns or enough other pieces that he can carry on moving his king backwards and forwards and get a stalemate so he was giving the stalemate answer that's what he was giving yesterday personally i think i mean at the end of the day i'm not as i say i'm not the prime minister I'm, aren't you I'm, oh i rang the wrong person up sorry tony i thought you were the prime minister um i picked up a card the other day and I asked the main woman in my life, imagine you, me and Tony were playing this game and I picked up this card, which player would most like to be the prime minister? And the main woman in my life instantly said, well, I know it's not you. You've told me that you wouldn't stand the pressure. Um, so, um, oh, and I'm not sure Tony would be that good with the pressure, but he might like to more than you. Would you, would you like to be prime minister, Tony? If, if someone knocked on your door- Not under said, the current and said we're looking we're looking for St Leonard's local treasurer Tony May because there's a vacancy as prime minister will you fill it like jury like jury duty it's your turn no, no, no. I mean I, I I just wouldn't be suitable for it there's no there's no <coughs> one. I, yes I've got plenty of ideas yeah some of them probably are quite good but yeah. the problem is um like I say politics is a team game isn't it it's well like yeah Tony so you say Tony, of course it's a team game. You've missed the obvious trick. Remember this. If someone comes to your door and offers you the premiership of the country, what you say, yes, I'll share it with my friends, particularly Paul, basic income Crossland. But then if you do that, you're going to be, you, if you do that, then you're going to be levelled with the cronyism thing again, aren't you? You see, the, 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 this is another issue with, with all this cronyism label is, Yes, in one respect, if you're trying to throw, um, you know, throw things up in the air and mix them up a bit, you can you can say it's cronyism. On the other hand, you can say, well, if you're a responsible prime minister and you know people in certain uh, industries that you know are really good people and you know if you pick up the phone to that person and they say they're going to do do something, that they will get that job done and you know you can rely on them, then okay. obviously... It's in your interest, if you want your policy to be seen through, to bring in those kind of people. Um, and again, this is another thing I think that's wrong with British society is that we, we have this obsession with equality and obsession with with kind of ticking boxes and, and, and all that lot. And it, it really, it's, it's just pointless, a lot of it. Tony, I've decided that I'd rather take this conversation in the direction of clarifying your 12 appointees for the cabinet. We're going to have a cabinet of 12, like 12 apostles, and you're going to appoint them. Obviously, your right-hand man is Nigel Farage. Well, you say you say obviously, but I'm not sure that... Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, to be quite frank, I, I'm not Come sure... Come on, 12 names. Will you, will you play ball with me? Well, Come well, on with 12 I, names, and then we'll end the call. It is, is pathetically... I mean, I, I would probably have Rhys Mogg as, as somebody on, on that I would actually have on my... On, OK, we've got Moggy, Moggy, Moggy out, out, out as, uh, on, your, on, your, 
on your capita. Anyone else you can think of? Well, obviously you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Can I be deputy PM? Um, well, no, that's Mog, is it? Okay, actually, safer pair of hands um, for for maintaining the um, the royal family, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, is is so. Reese Mog is your deputy PM. Um, can I can I be Department of Work and Pensions? Well, that no, no, no. No, Home was... Secretary. I want to be Home Secretary. I've worked with the Home Office in, um, and got into 10 Downing Street on their recommendation. Well, so you say that, but I, I, I firmly think that the Home Secretary's job is the, is the most poison chalice in politics. I, I would take that poison chalice in order to promote restorative justice. I would, do it, I would do that job with flair like has never been seen before. Uh, and there's, there's, there's lots of things about lots you of, want I me mean, to be chancellor of the exchequer tony you've got to come up with a job for me to do or minister for culture yeah minister for culture that'd be a good one for you yeah okay because you you are you do include everybody you talk to everybody you engage with everybody and you listen to everybody and that's what a minister of culture should do yeah but i would be particularly promoting a no blame no pain culture But, Sorry, I, Tony. No, I, 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 as I say, I, I just think that the all of these issues that we keep getting that come up with 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 um, with politics today just show that it's that the whole the whole political uh, way of going on is not fit for purpose anymore. Ten to go. Rishi Sunak in or out? Um. Probably in simply because he is popular and people people have taken people have taken him to their hearts. Um, Pretty Patel. Start. Pretty Patel. Again, to be fair, I don't really know. I, 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 personally, on a personal level, I would probably say no. But okay, I maybe you've got nine to you've got nine to go. The conversation ends when I've got no fingers left, and I'm not going to yeah. use a saw. Well, I mean. Um, I, maybe I would have Nigel Nigel Farage because at least as an he, advisor. Well, he would he would provide what I call the grit in the oyster. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's his job. I, th I think it'd be lovely to have an official grit in the oyster minister minister for grit in the oyster. But it is always good to hear. And, 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 yeah, and fisheries. Do you want to put him in charge of fisheries as well? Um. As I say, I, I, I really, uh, I'm not really well up with with any of these things. Fisheries would be a very important, uh, very important role, especially well, to want, me. Do you, you want to go and pick a fish fisherman from the state at Hastings at random for Sorry, that job? Can I just pause for a sec. What's that? Sorry, I'm going to have to pause you. I've got a phone call coming, Paul. Sure, I'll pause this this as well. Okay. So what's who else is Tony going to choose? Is he going to choose his soul fan, uh, Rubens? I'm glad I didn't mention him when he was handing out the culture job. I don't know whether you've seen the episode of Yes Minister, where people get um, get various jobs given given to them, um, and and waiting on the phone, and um, J Jim Hacker misses the the key phone the key phone call from the PM. But he has another phone call from PM, which is a radio program, and he thinks it's the PM, and he says things he shouldn't say to PM, and gets confused about what they're asking him to do because he thinks it's the PM's office rather than the office for the program PM. I think it's witty, yeah, but maybe he had to be there. Maybe he had to live through the eighties. Margaret Thatcher's uh, Margaret Thatcher was a fan of Yes Minister, and many people have said to the point that's become a cliche that um, that was Tony who passed him. Many people have said to the point that it's become a cliche that yes, minister is how Whitehall works. Um, it's not a comedy as much as it is a, a drama. I'd say it's a tragedy comedy because of course it shows um, influence happening in ways that um, are not what we would want from a democracy um, largely, maybe. I mean, Tony's making an interesting point about cronyism. And I think I'll go and get 
uh, the article from the New Statesman because um, actually I'll read another article from the New Statesman that Tony and I agree agree on. He hasn't appointed anyone for welfare, but this is Tony's welfare agenda, um, as I understand it. The COVID-19 pandemic is the greatest crisis the welfare state has faced since its post-war creation. Over the past year, job losses and wage cuts have forced 3 million more people in the UK to claim universal credit. After a decade of austerity, the necessity of a resilient social safety net has been demonstrated during this period of national emergency. In recognition of this, the government has incre the government increased universal credit payments by £20 a week at the outset of the crisis last March. Um, by the way, this is from the New Statesman dated 22nd to 28th of January 2021. Biden's burden is rather, that's a, I'd say that's one of the best covers of the New Statesman all, all year. And opening piece, the welfare conundrum. Oh, Tony's not here. We're going to have to wait to another time to. Um, I know he can join, can't he? He can still he can still join, but I think I think the energy might have gone out of this meeting. So um, we've we've got Rhys Mogg, Paul Crossland, Rishi Sunak, and Nigel Farage. Um, St Leonard's local treasure, Tony May builds up to a points a points Paul Crossland um, Jacob Rees Mog Rishi Sunak and Nigel Farage to his hashtag fantasy cabinet. 